Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to um, this online class gear and studio tour. Um, my name is Deanna Freeman. I think I have a few people that are joining that um, I've never met before, so hi. <laughs> I'll give it a couple minutes for a few people to join in. But um, so when you join in, say hello so that I know that you're here. Yeah, send little hearts. Feel free to share this video as well. So I made this public. If you know anybody that this could be helpful for, please feel free to um, to share that. Or I don't know if you can tag them in the in the comments. Okay, so today's um, online live class is all about teaching online. <laughs> so I will, uh, I'll just start by saying like, I'm not the expert. What happened was, what had happened was last summer, I decided that I wanted to um, teach more and I wanted to reach out to people that maybe didn't know my style of teaching or had never met before. And I knew I wanted to do some more um, online content. Like I did a block party, ATS block party um, earlier last year. And so I thought, well, I can just try to teach online classes. And um, I began recording my classes and I would realize that it would take me about four to six hours to record a class and then edit it because I would constantly go back and criticize myself for what I, whatever I said or whatever I didn't say or everything wasn't perfect. Um, so I decided doing it live. <laughs> so everything that I'm going to share with you today is based off of my live classes that I teach online, but the gear that I'm going to share with you, the tips that I'm going to share with you really are, are for any, um, any online classes or any filming that you want, you're wanting to do. Um, I will say that my classes that I teach are live on Facebook. So I use private Facebook groups for each series. I know a little bit about some other options because I've done a lot of research on it. So the things that I'll share with you may or may not be the very best, like million, you know, ways to go. But I'm try I try to do everything at minimal cost and minimal cost to the people that were joining me. Yeah. So I wanted it to be as free as possible, um, except for, of course, if you're charging for your online classes. Like that's really all the fee. Okay, so enough of that. <laughs> so for those of you that's just joining, hi, I'm Deanna. Hi, Diana. Hi, Danielle. Hi, Pam. Um, hi, Olivia. So I have a list here. I, want, I am going to do a blog post, and I started writing out my blog post outline, and I was like, oh, wow, that's a lot of information. And I feel like if I'm going to tell you about what it's like to teach online, I might as well do it by teaching you online <laughs> and doing it that way. Um, I know that a lot of us are having to do this not for the best of reasons, but I also feel like this is a great opportunity to reach out to people that might not know, um, you know, who you are or, and also if you're doing this to help your current students, then maybe it encourages your current students to start a home practice, right? So we have to look at this as all the positives. Okay. So um, your online setup does not have to be complex. First and foremost, it does not have to be complex. When I first started, I had my phone and I had a yoga block actually that I propped my phone up on and that was it. I'm actually doing this right now, doing this um, Facebook Live from my phone. Um, and then after a while, I started researching, well, okay, if I'm gonna do this, I better maybe have um, better lighting or a better sound or um, a different background. And so I, I kind of broke this up um, today's live, kind of broke it up into different sections. So we're gonna look, we're gonna talk about first like the space that you're dancing or that you're teaching in um, or yoga, if that's something that you're wanting to do. We're gonna talk about the lighting and the options, what I use, what I've looked at into. We're gonna talk about sound. Um, and then we'll get into the camera, the tripod, the more of the electronic, um, stuff and then I'll give you some tips like what to be prepared for and um, you know some little things that I had to learn along the way and since many of my online students are watching I want to just take a moment to thank them because I did do a couple of really cheap um, online series first to kind of ask them some questions they were my trial group and so a lot of this I was lucky enough to learn from my students, from my customers, right? So rarely do we get the opportunity to get that kind of feedback from our customers. So I'm really, really grateful for, to them um, for that. Okay, so first let's talk about our space. Uh, this is my space that I teach in. I have an extra room in my house, really lucky in that sense. So I had the hardwood floors put in um, this space. 
it doesn't have to be hardwood, but for dance, it's really helpful. And so I have this as my space. Now, I'm gonna give you a tour, so I'm gonna take you off of this tripod for a moment. Um, this is what's gonna be important about uh, when you're teaching online. So when you're teaching online, you have to think about the space that you're teaching in, yeah? So I am the kind of person that I don't like anything anywhere. Like I want everything to just be white. <laughs> and that, like even the fact that my curtain rod is showing drives me crazy. But there's a closet door right there. There's an outlet plug over here. And so I want everything to be nice and clean and clear. Um, when you have, when you're going to teach online, that's one of the things you need to think about is what are my, what is my, what are my students going to see behind me? What are they going to see around me? Um, do I have a, a stack of papers <laughs> in the corner? Do I have things that are distracting like a plant that needs to be watered or, um, you know, a fireplace mantle that has stuff all over the top. That's not like, you know, equal, equally spaced. So for those of you that um, dance American tribal style or fat chance belly dance style, think about your chorus, right? Your chorus needs to be like equal and clean and just like this beautiful background. That's what we want to see as students, right? We want to see a nice, beautiful background. It does not have to be white. It can be whatever color you want. You can hang saris, of course. You can make a, a beautiful background. You can have drums back there, your swords. You can have it however you want. But here's the thing. When you're teaching online, students might get distracted. So think about what do I want them to be focused on? Maybe a backdrop or may, background is really great, but maybe off to the side somewhere so that it doesn't distract from what's happening with my feet or what's happening with my legs or even what's happening with my arms. I chose a white background for a few reasons. Um, I did have a dark gray background up here because gray and white and this teal color are my logo. So why not take the opportunity to put a little branding into your videos? I did have a dark gray background, um, but as belly dancers, and or at least tribal style belly dancers, fat chance style belly dancers and the like, I tend to wear a lot of black. <laughs> and so the first class that I taught or when I was testing out the video, I was wearing all black with a gray background. And the students were like, if you're gonna always wear black, you might wanna change your background color. It's like, great, I would have never thought about that. I was just thinking about the colors that I liked, gray and black. So I went with white because then no matter what I wear, it can be seen. So all of that to say, if you are going to, um, if you're gonna have colors back behind you or you're gonna have a background back behind you, think about what are you gonna be wearing? What colors are you gonna be wearing? Are you gonna have fabric lay all back behind you and then you're gonna be wearing big fabric skirts? Is it gonna get lost? Because it's, it's different when you're in person, right? Or you're watching a show and there's a backdrop and then somebody's more 3D in front of you than it is when you're watching a screen and there's just a lot of the same textures or a lot of the same colors happening. So really be aware of the space, the background that you are, um, that you're dancing with. Also, um, and this might just be me, but having everything nice and clean, like I like white because I can see if there's a spot anywhere and this is my OCD coming in. Um, so making sure that everything is super clean is really important. I'm gonna turn you back around. I don't know about you all, but when somebody posts a video online or a photo online and they have a bunch of stuff in the background, I. I'm like looking at their stuff. <laughs> like, why do they have all those papers over there? And why are those books stacked that way? I just And maybe it's just because of the way that I like to have my um, background. But maybe this is a little too stark for you. So just anyways, be thinking about the space that you are presenting, right? Keeping your space really clean and not distracting. All right. Um, now let's talk about lighting. So with lighting, that is huge. So lighting was a huge challenge for me. The best kind of lighting is daylight. If I could open up these windows and have the sunshine come in, that would be perfect. But I'm in Portland, Oregon. There's not a lot of sunshine that's happening, especially eight months out of the year. And that means I would only be able to film at a certain time of the day. So it's really important to have really great lighting. The light fixture that is here in my studio, not very great. Even if I put daylight bulbs in there, it's just not gonna do a whole lot of good. Um, so I, I did some research on lighting and I tried to cheap out on my lighting. So you can absolutely get these lights from like a Home Depot. See, you're judging me for what's behind my light right now, aren't you? Um, you can absolutely get these lights from Home Depot. 
These are clamp lights. You can clamp them on furniture. You can clamp them on a table and you can get a daylight bulb to go inside of them. You can get a couple of these actually and they are super, super bright. The thing about these lights is that they cast a shadow. So there's a little bit of shadow on me right now with, with the light that I actually do use that I'll show you in a moment. These lights cast a shadow and I did a lot of research on lighting because I'm not, I'm not a lighting person. So if you get two of these and you shine one on you and then you shine one on your background, that reduces the shadow. So you could, if you already have these at home or you have some kind of industrial lights at home or you have a light but it has a shadow, maybe you grab one of these from, I say Home Depot or Lowe's, but like a, um, you know, a home supply store and just shine that on your backdrop and maybe that'll re help reduce some of your shadows. So keep that in mind for your lighting. Um, after all of that, and I have three of these, they're, I think they're called canned lights or anyways, I call them clamp lights. After trying that and being like, and then every time I wanted to move in my space, those lights had to move and I had to figure out what to clamp them on. I went with this. I went with a beauty light. So um, the beauty light is actually really great. So this beauty light is, is, I got it on Amazon. It was probably about $100. Sorry, I have my, this is, my camera's backwards and I'll explain all of that in a little bit. Um, and the reason I really like this is, first of all, if you're gonna use your phone, you can mount it here if you want to. Um, but also it's dimmable. So by that, I mean, you can make the light softer you can make it brighter and it came with different filters. So I could make a more orange light if I wanted to. I just have this bright light on here and then I just dim it based off of if I have my windows open or what kind of video I'm doing. So this video, this light is called um, Neewer, N-E-E-W-E-R. And I will put this in the blog along with the links that, um, that where I got them. And then it's on a giant tripod. So you can adjust, not only can you adjust how tall it is, but check it out. You can, sorry for the back, you can bend it over. And so sometimes that's really helpful if you are, for instance, sitting down at a table when you're doing like a and a or you're just kind of chatting to your, to your students and you don't really want to adjust the tripod, you can just kind of switch it over a little bit. So that's the light that I use. Um, for those of you that use Facebook Live or you're wanting to use Facebook Live, there's also some things um, that I will share. Maybe I'll share them here, but I want to—I really want to share them in the blog because I can do print screens and little videos to show you. You can enhance the lighting through Facebook Live. There are other ways and other programs you can do it, but just know if you're doing Facebook Live and you don't have a light, you can enhance the lighting on your videos. Okay, so um, yeah, so uh, yeah, clamp lights, daylight bulbs, beware of shadows, <laughs> basically it, right? And think about it like it's, you want, you want that selfie light to happen, right? So, um, so okay, so that's our space and that's our lighting. Um, let's see what else we have. I'm gonna scroll through these comments real fast. Oh, hi from Spain. Hi from the Czech Republic. Hello everyone, thanks for joining me today. Okay, so now let's talk about sound. For the purpose of this video, I do not have a microphone. I'm clearly just using my phone. So I have a iPhone 11 Pro, I just upgraded. Look how, how fancy it is. Um, but here's the thing. I looked into those um, lavalier mics, you know, where you clip on, but then you have to wear something on your butt. <laughs> I don't want to wear anything on my butt because I'm shaking it. So I, I, I nixed that. I tried to find something that was Bluetooth. I've tried putting my AirPod in my ear and using that as a mic because it works in the car or it works, you know, when I'm working at my office, that didn't work. So I, this room is very, before the curtains were in here, it's very um, acoustic, right? It's a little bit tinny sounding. So I had to do a few things. First of all, Test what your um, sound sounds like just with the with the sound options that you have. So before you buy a mic, what does your sound sound like um, with just whatever phone, whatever microphone you're currently using, whether that's your computer or whether that's your phone or whether that's a fancy DSLR, which I'll get to shortly. 
and just test that out. If it sounds a little tinny, then maybe this is, here's, here's the cheapy way to do it. Maybe you can just pile some pillows or some blankets or some sofa cushions in the room where you're gonna be filming and that absorbs a lot of the sound. Because I like things super clear, I opted not to do that. Plus, I wanna be able to dance and move in my space and I have people come out, coming over for private lessons. So I, um, I sucked it up and I bought these. These are acoustic panels. I, my husband just installed them for me um, about a month and a half ago. And I got, they come in many, many colors. I got them on Amazon and check this out. The company that I got them from is called ATS Acoustics. No joke. I was like, well, those are the ones that were meant for me. So here we are. These acoustic panels have really been super helpful to absorb just enough sound that the mic on my phone works a little bit uh, better than it did. It's not as tinny. So these are, I know it's funny, right, Diana? So these are um, acoustic panels. They come on and off pretty easily if you ever wanted to take them off. Um, I know that in a lot of people's spaces, this isn't something that they're wanting to do. However, a lot of you are probably going to be teaching out of, let's say, your living room or a bedroom or a carpeted room, and you, aren't, you're not, you might not have the sound issues that I did. I also invested in this little thing. So this little mic right here is called um, a Rode mic. R-O-D-E, and I didn't want to put it on my phone because I wanted to be able to show it to you. So I got this on Amazon as well. I've done so much research, so many different Amazon um, uh, videos and ordered stuff and sent it back. And this thing has really actually works pretty well. So it has this little um, AV plug. So if you're going to use your phone, you have to get that little adapter thing. Otherwise, you can plug it into a DSLR camera pretty easily. And it has this little fuzzy thing that you can take off. I know that those of you that are probably sound experts are cringing at the fact that I called it a fuzzy thing, but it is. So it cuts down on, um, like if you had wind or air or window open, it would cut down on some of that as well. So this Rode mic, I'll show you the box because it's this Video Micro. I see it's backwards and I'll, I'll explain why shortly. Um, compact on camera microphone. All right, so I'll post that in the blog along with a link to where you can get that um, on Amazon as well. Okay, so here's a couple of other things about sound. As dancers, um, a, lot a lot of times we use finger symbols. Now, this is actually something that I learned um, thanks to Detura Online when, I was, when Colette invited uh, Christine and I to film. Thank you so much, Colette. When you're playing your finger symbols in a space like this, with this sound, with this music, it can be a little intense. So when I'm teaching and I'm playing my finger cymbals, I put those Zill mufflers on my finger cymbals, little crocheted ones that one of my students and friends made me. So I'll use those on my Zills. And that way the students can hear me talking. They can hear the music. They're not hearing like, they know what Zills sound like, right? They don't want to hear the Zills. They want to hear you and they want to hear the music and they want to focus on that. So Zill mufflers or... If you have wooden zills, I don't have wooden zills, but I think that that might be my next investment. Wooden zills would probably be really great. Um, and electrical tape. So we didn't obviously use zill mufflers on when we were doing, when I was at Detour online, like you can sell, see that when you watch Call Out online, but electrical tape, taped underneath your zill in an X pattern works really, really great, but it leaves goo. So just be aware of that. So I found that the little muffles, mufflers, these things, work really, really well. I mean, you know, there's a little color on your zills when you're zilling, but it's really helpful for the sound. All right, so let me see. I think I saw a few. Um, okay, so thank you, Diana. That's where I'm going next. So Diana asks, do you play your music on a separate device or on the same device you're filming on? Separate, for sure. Facebook Live, once you get off of this, well, because I do Facebook Live, um, once you get off of this screen, I don't know what's going to happen. And then everybody has to rejoin. So I don't, once it's on, I don't touch it. If you're filming with a, with a camera, then you can certainly, of course, use your phone. Here's what I have. There you go. Diana blue painters tape also doesn't leave any goo. Thank you. Um, here's what I have. I have this little plug-in speaker. It's Bluetooth. So I use my iPad and then I can set my iPad anywhere in my room and use it. And then I can also just adjust the volume. Now, 
This is another tip for those of you that are doing this. Go ahead and test your sound and have your volume set before you start the class because my students that are on here knows sometimes I play my music and I'm like, wow, that's too loud. And then you have to kind of go over and turn it down. And I, I like for it to just be perfect. So go ahead and test that um, out before you go on. Um, Anna, I will talk about Zoom, Google Hangout, and those in just a second. Yeah, Diana, it's like a rock a block rocker. Yes, that kind of thing. So that's what I use for my sound. And in this space, it's great. I point the sound towards me. I don't have it pointing towards my recording device. That way it's not blaring, but they can still hear it. Okay. So I know that there were also questions related to music and copyright. Here's what I'm going to say about that. Um, so I'm going to have a seat. Music and copyright. I taught Facebook Live for about seven months before I had any copyright issues. And then all of a sudden, Facebook decided that they were going to mute any, any of my songs within my class that was copyrighted. Um, now, luckily, when I teach it live, it's not muting it. So it just lets you teach it live to whatever song you want. But then afterwards, you get an email that's like, hey, we muted this song. And it tells you the song because it's copyrighted. And then you can see which countries it's copyrighted in because they're not all copyrighted in all of the countries. So with me, I have online students in multiple countries. And it took me a little while to figure it out because one person would say, I hear that song just fine. And another person would say, I don't hear anything. Hmm. So it's really, really important um, for you to just be aware of that. Now, what I have done, um, it, it's just been like maybe a month and a half since I started having these issues. So I started creating little folders in my Spotify. One folder is um, copyrighted music. Don't use it online. When I figure out that a song is copyrighted, I just don't, I put it in that folder and I know not to use that song. And then I have another folder that's, that's no copyright, which means use it all day long. So those are the ones that I'm using. Typically, if you find a song in an album that's not, that Facebook doesn't make you turn off or mute, then any song in that album is good. It's just unfortunate that a lot of the times, like we can't use a whole full album, unless it's like somebody like um, Dianishma, you know, uh, Afrit Temple. There's a few few musicians out there. I know that we can contact the musicians and say like, hey, Facebook did this or YouTube did this. But I feel like I haven't gotten to that point yet because while I'm sure Jeremiah, and I think that Michio did this with the, with the song Bounce because she was doing something online and that's in my copyright list. Um, she got Jeremiah to okay it. And I don't know how she had to go with Facebook to like let them go through, but I feel like it's a big pain. And so if I can just for now, at least use the songs that are not copyrighted, that's what I'm doing. Now, side note, I have a Spotify playlist for every series that I teach. And I share that Spotify playlist in my group, whether the songs are copyrighted or not. Um, so last, last month, I taught a, a series called Flip It and Reverse It. And there were a lot of fun songs that I knew they were copyrighted. One song I didn't know was copyrighted, but then a few other ones that I figured were copyrighted, but I still put them in the playlist because they're fun so that they can have fun with that. Um, so yeah, copyrighted versus non-copyrighted. Now I'll tell you basic drum rhythms. Like if you can find Carmine, I don't know how to say his last name, Guida, Guida, Guida. If you can find his patterns, he has like Bellity at 90 BPMs, Bellity at 100 BPMs, Shiftatelli at this... Those are great because it's just a drum rhythm and there's no copyright on just that drum rhythm. So I've, I've used those a lot for drilling in my classes. Um, so copyright stuff, still working on specifically on Facebook. Um, and I've researched it in, on YouTube and a few other platforms, which I'll talk about shortly. Um, but that one's, that one's still a challenge. So you have to contact the artist individually. Like I know Zoe Jakes posted on Facebook and it's like, you can use all the music you want to. That's great, but then you have to go through, you know, the Facebook situation where you're like, no, this song really is okay. No, this song really is okay. No, this song really is okay. And you're just like, Ugh. and I don't know if that's every time you use it or just the first time you use it and then you're good forever. So maybe that'll get a little bit better as people start um, letting Facebook know, you know, that these songs are okay for us to use as dancers. All right, so we talked about space, we talked about lighting, we talked about music, including Zills and microphones. 
Um, so now let's talk about all the other stuff like camera versus phone, tripods, all these little things that we've got going on. So here's the thing. If you're going to teach live classes, you've got to have a solid internet connection. And so we have the, like the best internet connection you can get from whatever our cable company is, but I'm downstairs and our router is upstairs. And sometimes Facebook live didn't like that depending on what time of day it was or whatever. So in my studio where I film, where I do these classes, I have a Wi-Fi extender. So I definitely recommend the Wi-Fi extender because once I put that Wi-Fi extender in here, I have not had the sound issues. I had a sound issue the other day. It turns out it was the Wi-Fi extender. So once I put that Wi-Fi extender in here, the voice matches up. I don't look like I'm in a Kung Fu movie, um, although that's kind of cool. And it works out pretty well. So Wi-Fi extender, if you don't have one or you don't have a solid connection um, or you're stealing your neighbor's Wi-Fi, you might want to look into getting a solid Wi-Fi um, connection. All right. So phone versus camera versus webcam versus versus versus. I will tell you, I have tried them all. Here's the thing. Um... I used my phone to start because I was like, well, I'll just use my phone. It's good enough. And I was doing just like a bunch of, you know, free stuff. Um, and then, I, you know, I started doing online classes where people were paying for the series. And I was like, I need to really make these better quality. And I don't want to just do it on my phone. And so um, we have a Canon EOS 5 DSLR camera. I'm going to show it to you. So we have this, I call it my fancy camera, right? So if you are going to use one of these, which it's great, I highly recommend one, um, then here's a few things to know. The battery on this only lasts so long. So if you're teaching an hour long class or you're recording an hour long class, your battery isn't gonna be that, that big. So I have this little plug that plugs into the wall so that my battery now lasts forever. So make sure that whatever device you're using, your battery is full and that it's capable of however long you're going to be online. All right. Another thing about the DSLR camera is that you can connect it to a computer as your webcam. It takes some setup. So I had to get, and I had, this is a lot of research, you, you all. I had to get an HDMI cable. I got this thing called CamLink. Um, and so I, I have my old MacBook down here and I got all of this situated and I, now I can use my Canon DSLR as a webcam. But it, it, if you want to, here's some things. If you want to use autofocus on this Canon as a webcam, it, has a, it shows a box in Facebook Live, like a little box, like your, you know, there would be a box at the tip of my finger here, and then there would be a box at the tip of my finger here where their camera is following you around. And that's pretty annoying. Um, so you have to go on manual autofocus, which means you better not be moving a whole lot, and you better not have more than one person in your studio when you're filming. So if you're wanting to go live with a DSLR camera, then there's a couple things that you can do. First of all, you have to get that set up with the HDMI cable and the cam link. And there are YouTube videos of people that know a lot more about that than I do that I will link uh, in my blog post. Um, the battery extender. And you'll have to just stay in the same spot, really. Um, also, the spacing. So depending on the space that you're dancing in, you that camera only goes so wide unless you get a wide lens or it only zooms in so much. When I try to turn the camera portrait mode so you could see my full body, it turned everything portrait mode. It turned everything like that as well. So I was like, well, that doesn't work at all. Here's the thing. You can get third-party software that you plug, you, you use it on your on your computer, you run your camera, through that software as a webcam, and then that camera can then feed to 
Facebook Live, YouTube, Instagram, multiple places all at the same time. There's different software out there. One's called OBS. That one's free. It's kind of a pain to use. There's OBS Studio, which is a little more user-friendly and it's free. It's the kind of free of like all the things that you really want, have, you have to pay for. Um, and then there are also services like Vimeo. Livestream is now owned by Vimeo or vice versa. $75 a month and you have to pay a year in advance. So I haven't committed to that yet but you can get third-party software that will fix some of the issues with using a DSLR as a webcam. Otherwise, you can just film on your DSLR camera and you know make sure that you have a big memory card and that extended battery life, and then go from there. But if you're wanting to do it live, it's a little bit of a setup involved. That being said, my iPhone has been the best thing. So yeah, $1,500 camera, great. I'm still using my phone. I upgraded my phone, um, but if you're gonna go Facebook Live, unless you get that whole setup like I was just talking about, it's really designed for mobile devices. So um, depending on the space that you are teaching in, before you start your Facebook Live, you can, <laughs> you can turn it, before you start your Facebook Live, you can turn it um, landscape and then start Facebook Live, or you can go portrait mode. Now portrait mode, of course, it leaves these little blocks like I'm sure you're seeing on the side. But when I went into uh, landscape mode, you either couldn't see my feet or you couldn't see the top of my hands. So I actually went live with my fancy Canon camera a couple of weeks ago, and the sound was a little bit off because I think the connection of the HDMI cable from one thing to the, to the other wasn't really, it's just not as great when you're trying to also feed and stream live for some reason. And the screen, I was far away. So see how close I am right now? I'm gonna put, I'm gonna put you in my tripod in a second. Um, when I used my DSLR, I was farther away. You could see more of it and I could certainly, like if I was gonna have two or three people in my room, you could definitely, um, you know, see all of those people. But when you're one on one, it's it's just portrait mode tends to be better. But yeah, exactly, Diana. The trouble I've had using the camera on my laptop, no feet and no hands. I did buy a webcam. I bought a Logitech, some kind of fancy fancy webcam, and I hooked it up with my camp with my laptop. And not only was it the same quality as my phone, but yeah. Unless I set my cam my phone my um, laptop way the heck I don't even know you couldn't you couldn't see everything so again I, I went back to my phone in portrait mode so I'm gonna put you in my tripod for a second let me show you my tripod so with my um, Canon DSL DSLR am I saying that right um, tripod I have this just like we've had this tripod forever. So I just have that there. Um, this tripod I got on Amazon for probably less than $20. It, um, it's pretty sturdy. You can extend it or shorten it however you need it to be. And so I just set my phone in here. I'm going to turn you around. I just set my phone in here. And then here's the thing. This is going to take us into the tips of, of filming and being live. So I set my phone in my tripod and the thing about it is, if you are gonna film on Facebook Live, if you're gonna go Facebook Live, know that if you're testing your space and your spacing with your video camera on your regular phone, it's not the same spacing as Facebook Live. So I would set my entire space up based off of what does my video look like for my camera button on my phone. And then I would go Facebook Live and it would be completely different. I, it would be more condensed. It wouldn't be as wide angled. So I really had to play around with, okay, now you can test Facebook Live without actually going Facebook Live. And I can show you some of that as well. Um, so that's kind of what I do now. The first several times that I went live, I set everything up, right? And I got everything perfect. I was like, okay, this is how, you know, this isn't exactly right now, but this is exactly where I can be with like seeing everything. And I put tape on the three parts where my tripod feet need to be in order to always be right here. I put painter's tape as far up as I could go just outside of the view of the camera so that I knew exactly every week or every class where to put my tripod and how far forward I can go with my students to be, still be able to see me. Because for the first several months, 
I had my camera facing me, but like I couldn't see it. Facebook, if you are Facebook Live, this is super important. If you are Facebook Live and you are using your front camera, you will be backwards. There's a setting that you have to do in your Facebook Live to flip the image so that when I say my right hand, it really truly, it looks like my right hand because it looked, it really, it's so crazy how it looks like it's your left hand even though you're saying you're right. That's why now when I flip my camera around so I, you can see what I'm looking at, it's backwards because it's one way or the other and I'd rather it be correct when I can see the forward facing camera. Super, super important to test that out. So for a while, I had no idea that that was a thing. So I had my laptop set up so I could see my Facebook Live just so that I knew it wasn't crashing. And then I just had to set my camera up and, and pray <laughs> that everything was going great. So I had those markers as far as where to set up my camera. So if you're using a space that you have to kind of pack everything up um, every, time you're, every time you're done filming and then pull it all back out, using some kind of little marker indicator of where you need to set all of your things is gonna be super, super helpful. All right? Um, so, out of all of this fancy ass equipment that I have tried and that I've put hours of time into working and researching and YouTubing and all of this stuff, the freaking phone works best. Who knew? Um, but that works best for me. So whatever you find might work best for you. Like I said, if I'm filming something to post later, my DSLR camera or DRS, whatever that those letters are, that's how much I know about them, um, works great. And I, and it, it's, it's beautiful. But if I'm live, the phone is where it's at really. Um, and like I said, there are filters and stuff that you can use to make the images brighter. That was another thing with my DSLR camera the lighting, even though I had this lighting, it wasn't as bright because I couldn't control Facebook Live from that camera like I can with my phone. So it was gonna take more lighting to have the same effect um, with just a simple filter that my Facebook Live offers. Um, okay, let me look at my notes. All right, so um, I talked a little bit about that streaming software that you can get. That streaming software, you can add filters, you can add um, logos. You can add, you can be green screen and put yourself like, I don't know, wherever you want to be. It's really, really amazing. And I'm still looking into that because I want the little countdown counter to happen before the class goes like, Deanna's going to be live in 10, 9, 8. And then I want my little logo at the bottom and I want to be able to say, click here for more information, but I'm not there yet. <laughs> so those are some of the things that I'll continue to learn and I'm happy to share them as I go with the hopes that if you understand them and you learn them, then you'll share that information with me as well. Um, okay, right now, also you can see the image. I can tell from the ceiling that the camera is a little bit crooked. So again, it's super important to just kind of test everything before you go live. And the tripod is really short, but that tends to work out really great so that you can see my whole body. If I made the tripod as tall as I was, you can't see my feet in the space that I'm in for the distance that I wanna be in, in the camera. I hope that that makes sense. So you really have to play around with it, move around with it, try all of the options first. Please test everything first. Okay, so let me scroll and see if there are any questions and then I'm gonna to get to my uh, last little section. Um, do, do, do. Diana. Oh, Diana, she says, you're so great to share all these lessons learned. So my husband, he came home from a trip just a few, like before I went live and I, he's like, what are you working on? And I was like, well, I'm going to go live and tell everybody how I'm doing my classes so that they can do their classes. And he's like, you're giving your secrets to your competition. <laughs> I was like, it's not my competition. It's my friends. <laughs> it's my community. And they need it because all of our studios are like limited, limited time or closed or whatever. So I'm just happy that I had the information to be able to share it. Um, why hoard information? If you have it, share it. Otherwise, I wouldn't be a great teacher, would I? <laughs> so I'm just happy to share. Um, okay, Diana says, that's the trouble I've had using the cam on my laptop. No feet, no hands. I know, it's like great for if you're teaching belly rolls. <laughs> but otherwise, no. Oh, I love all the hearts, yay. Thank you. Um, 
And then Carrie says, digital single lens reflex camera. Hee <laughs> hee. So those are words I don't understand. <laughs> there are some great photographers. Okay, so like Suze, Suzanne Sukes, she's a, like, that's what she does. And she teaches that at a university. And so she is in some of my classes. Um, and she sent me some notes as far as like, this is what you can do with your camera to do all this stuff. And I was like, I don't know what you're talking about. So if you're really interested in using your DSLR camera, I'm sure that you could reach out to somebody in our community that's a photographer that could help you with those settings. Um, I just was, I was just focused on trying to get it to be my webcam first. And once it realized, once I realized it was just not as good as I wanted it to be, I kind of got deflated and I went back to my phone for a little while. So, um, yeah, Olivia, you're welcome. Okay. So, and then, and then Anna says off topic, how are things going in Portland? COVID-19. I'll talk about that too. Okay. So here's a few more things that I wanted to share, um, as tips. You can see why I thought of a live video was going to be a little bit easier than just putting all of this in a blog. It's going to be in a blog, but I wanted to get this out sooner rather than later because um, also with the time difference, but I know a lot of people are working on this stuff this weekend because everything's pretty much closed next week or through April or whatever. So I wanted to get this out now so you can get started on it. Um, all right, so here are some tips. These are teaching tips that I've learned. If anybody has other ones, please feel free to share or please do share. Um, when you are teaching, when you're teaching to a camera, when you're teaching to your phone, it's quite different. Be prepared. If you are not somebody that plans your classes and you're like, I'm just going to show up and just feed off of what my students need. Guess what? Your students aren't in there. <laughs> and so you need to plan your class out. Um, I say that because I plan every class out and then I just feed off of what my students need that day or, oh, they've got that. Let's move on. You know that as instructors. Um, but when you are teaching and you're, you can't see the bodies, you don't have that feedback. You can't, you can ask, do you have any questions, <laughs> but it's weird. <laughs> Trust me. <laughs> um, so you have to be prepared. You have to anticipate this makes, and I really strongly feel like this makes, I feel like I've grown so much as an instructor, always still growing as an instructor so much as an instructor, because I've had to anticipate what my students need. They can't ask me the questions straight on the way that my format is. And we can talk about that a little bit as well. So I have to be prepared. I have to be able to talk about what, what's the most common question that comes up when I'm talking about this movement, when I'm working on the feet of this movement. Did I, did I cover how the zills match with this movement? Did I, like all of those things you have to be prepared for. Like I said, you can't just hear somebody go, oh, that reminds me, let's talk about how the zills are played or, oh, I see their feet aren't quite right. Let, let me remind them about this other thing. You have to put it all out there. So I have, I'll show you. I have, and of course it's backwards. We talked about why. I think I can switch it um, from here, but I just, I know I can switch it from here, but I don't, I'm just not gonna do that right now um, for the sake of the video. So I have a whiteboard where this is from the, the yoga class that I just did online um, that I just write out. Of course me, I type out every class I teach. Every class that I teach is typed out. Um, and then I come in here and I write it out on my whiteboard. I write the highlights, like don't forget this, don't forget that. Don't forget gratitude. Don't forget to warm up. Don't forget to review posture if that's part of it. Um, and so I just kind of have my outline of my class and little notes like, don't forget this, don't forget that. Maybe you don't need that, but for me, I feel like that's a really great safety net. And I, I feel like um, for my teaching and my personality, that makes me feel comfortable. It's my safety blanket. Um, so be prepared. What is it like to not teach to someone? Maybe for the first, like if you're, in, if you're wanting to do live classes, try just teaching to your phone first and not going live first. And you'll see, you can't go, oh crap, I need to start over. Oh, I can't believe I said that out loud. Like you can't say those things and you can't erase them. It's out there. So you have to really be prepared. Um, prepare yourself mentally as well. I start every class with just coming into your space and breathing. Sometimes I do that before I start. Often I do it before I start, but sometimes I also do it in class. 
um, when we first start, just to kind of come into your space and transition from the chaos that's going on outside of your room to now. Um, so doing that as you prepare for your class online as well. It might be tempting because it's like, I'm at home, I can just turn it on and go, but you still have to transition into the mindset of I'm an instructor and I'm walking into my classroom and still keep it really professional. Um, so be prepared, you don't have bodies for feedback. Uh, make some notes and it's, it, here's the thing, you, it's vulnerability. Here it is, it's vulnerability. You're, if you're, especially if you're teaching live and this is why I'm teaching live, and I don't record my classes and post them. Both of them are right. There's no wrong way to do it. I mean, you're offering people your everything. Do it however you want to. Um, but I found that when I teach live classes, I'm less stressed because I'm like, well, they're getting what they get. And hopefully, <laughs> hopefully today I've got my shit together, you know? Um, and it's just like walking into a live class in the studio, like hopefully, you're, you're mentally prepared. And for those of you that are instructors, you know, like you can teach a basic Egyptian one day and a basic Egyptian the next day. And one day you're like, dang, that class was awesome. And the next day you're like, well, that sucked. And it's the same movement. It just, it's different because of the energy that you put into it and how you're, you are mentally. And if you're prepared, so just prepare yourself and prepare yourself to be vulnerable. Um, not everybody is going to and I've learned this, like not everybody is going to like you and that is okay. Um, going back to that whole, you know, what my husband said about competition. Here's what I, I'm a yoga instructor in Portland, Oregon. Talk about competition. Like it's like there's, it's fine. It, there's enough for everybody. It's not pie, right? Like it's not like there's only eight pieces and that's it. So if you're teaching online classes and I'm teaching online classes and that person's teaching on great, because you know what, then somebody's going to find the instructor that resonates with them and they're going to get to dance. So if somebody's taking my classes and they don't resonate with me, I'm that's fine. They might, I don't never had anybody tell me maybe once somebody is like, I just don't like you. And that's fine too. I'm going to say, well, you might like this person's class actually, because try them out. Um, so if you have students and they're like, I don't know, I'm just not getting it or whatever, like send them to another instructor, see if they're going to like them. It's not about you. How's that? It's not about you. <laughs> it's about what you're giving other people. So, um, yeah. So be prepared, prepare yourself, prepare your class, prepare your mentally, prepare your space, um, and give your students you're everything. It's harder when you're not in class with them and you're not sharing that energy with them. You can't feel like right now, like how many people are rolling their eyes? Like you can't see that. Um, you just have to pull it all into yourself. It's kind of like when you're dancing in a restaurant and nobody's watching you, they're all just eating their food. And you're like, I've got to make this work. I got to pull it all out of me um, and offer it out. There you go. A couple of other things and then I promise I'll be done. Sorry, it's so long. Um, don't beat yourself up. Don't beat yourself up. It's part of the process. It's part of your, you are learning as an instructor too. You're learning um, as a student as well. You are going to be dancing a lot more as you teach online than you would be dancing in your class because you are leading all of the drills. You are leading everything. You can't, you're not just walking around when they get into formation. Like you are dancing the full time. So um, people are watching you. They're watching your technique. They're watching your every move. They're watching your every mistake. They're watching your musicality. And so you just have to like do your best and let it go um, and trust that your students are learning something. You are learning something. Um, yeah. And then, and just kind of letting that go. Um, one last thing, just, and this is kind of like inserted in the wrong place, but a mirror or not a mirror. I, this entire wall is mirrors. Let me take you. Let me take you on a tour. So this entire wall is mirrors. I just have this curtain covering them up. Um, because of the way that my space is set up, if I was as close as I wanted it to be, you couldn't see my feet. So I opted to not use mirrors in my class. I have filmed videos drill videos and whatnot where I did it in the mirror because of the way that I was filming, it was fine. But my live classes, I just, you know, it's kind of like those of you that have taught workshops where you didn't have a mirror. It's just like, it is what it is. So do things facing forward, do things facing away, 
making sure that you're projecting your voice and you're speaking clearly and not as fast as I tend to speak. <laughs> so just make sure that you're projecting and that you're thinking about things from your student's perspective. Okay. Woo! Let me look through and see if we have any questions. And then um, I, that might be everything. I'm going to look at my notes real fast. Okay. Uh, let's see. Oh, we were going to talk about Google Hangouts and whatnot. Um, Paloma says, hi, do we set the price for our online classes? Is it supposed to be equal as the current classes more or less? How do we manage that? Thank you. So it's really, it's up to you and your community. I'm going to start with that. It's up to you. It's up to your community. If you are, you know, if you own a studio and you're like, my gosh, I have to make this work and I have to pay my rent, then that means that maybe your prices are the same as your, you know, monthly unlimited or the same as your series. Um, I use my online classes to supplement the rent that I have to pay for my other classes. So I keep my online classes actually a lot cheaper than I do my in-person classes. There's, you know, there's not a lot of overhead. I'm investing right the money right back into, you can see all of the, all the stuff that I have in here. Um, cause the, like the acoustic panels aren't cheap the camera, of course, all of that. Anyways. Um, so I keep my, my online classes fairly cheap. So my online classes for four, the way that I do my online classes, four week series is $30. If somebody has taken class with me in the previous series, they have a coupon for $5 off. So they get four live classes for $25 and Every Sunday morning at nine o'clock, I'm live for a and A. I don't stop my class and go, okay, are there any questions on that movement? Because I want people to be able to come back and watch this as many times as they want to and not have to like keep watching me answer, you know, so-and-so's question about count two on this movement, right? I, I just want to be able to give them all the content, which is another reason why everything's planned out. And then on Sunday, we have a and A. So it's eight hours of live content Sometimes I go over, a lot of times I go over <laughs> for 25 bucks. That's what works for me. Um, I'd rather keep it cheap and reach out to more people. But if I'm teaching something like a five hour class or something specialized or two classes every whatever, I mean like I've, my prices have fluctuated in that sense. Like April's five weeks, the price will be a little bit different. Um, but I would say, you know, it depends on your overhead. If you're having to rent a space to film in, that's different. If you're filming so that you can pay for the rent for the studio that you're not even able to get into, that's different as well. It's a great question, Paloma. It's something that you really have to, yeah, you really have to be careful of. And, you know, there's a lot of people out there that are doing things for free online. Um, there are a lot of things that, you know, people are doing for $10 a month because maybe they um, have a lot more volume. I did a lot of stuff for free for a long time and someone said someone told me you know when you're putting stuff out there for free you're actually that's undercutting other people and I was like oh you're right oh my gosh I'm so sorry so now I try to balance that out like I I want to freely give all of my information and the reason that I charge is because I don't want to undercut anybody um, and these days, you know, pay my bills, but also I don't want to undercut anybody. So if you're just kind of be careful about that, um, here in Portland, we actually have a Portland belly dance guild. So when you are, um, contacted for a gig or something like that, everybody has the same pricing. And I think that that's great. So like somebody's not going to call, like if they call Sedona for, um, a private show somewhere at like a wedding or something and they get one price and they're like, Oh, well, I'm going to call around and they call Henna they're going to give her the same price. So they're going to, they're, everybody's on the same page. And I really like that. So, um, yeah, try, just try not to undercut people, but also, you know, what's reasonable for where you are in your space. Okay. Sorry. Um, let me go keep going through your DSLR camera basically means that the viewfinder, the little window you look through, um, on more modern cameras, the image on the little screen in the back you use to compose your picture looks through the big lens in the front. So you see almost exactly what you will get in the image. Cheap compact cameras have used the, the viewfinder in the top left corner of the camera. So the picture you see through the viewfinder is shifted a bit compared to the image the camera actually takes. <laughs> Geek mode off. Thank you for that. Oh my gosh, that's a great point. Um, 
yeah, I mean, if you're focused on that DSLR image, if you are using that camera, it, maybe it's going to be a little off. So maybe peek through your hole for a minute too. So thank you for that. If you're, especially if you're trying to center, you might be slightly off center. Um, Lenka says, I'm loving all your advice. One question about using mic, uh, music, sorry. If you are selling a class and using certain songs, the problem with licensing I see is that you actually cannot use a song commercially without paying the fees. At least that's the law here. I don't know how to formulate the question though. I understand the question completely. I pay a subscription. I don't know the, all the answers to music licensing and I think that every country is different. And I think whoever you ask is different. Um, I pay a subscription to Spotify um, to use the music. I use the music in yoga classes. I use the music in dance classes. I use the music online. If somebody comes up to me and is like, you owe, you know, I don't know, however much money because of the music that, that you used, I'm going to tell them, go ahead and audit all my classes and tell me how much I owe you. And then I'm going to contact the musicians and tell them how much money we've sent their way based off of, I mean, it's a par partnership, right? Um, so I don't know the answer to that question. It's, it's a challenge. I know that there are a lot of musicians that are like, Hey, use my music, please, because that's why I'm putting it out there. And that's going to get other people to perform my music and use my music and get them to go to their concerts and everything else. And I think that's awesome. I try to use music from Rocky and the Cavemen, Beats Antique, Soulless, Helm, um, Carmine, um, Hosam Ramsey, and that's pretty much like the people that I feel like are a part of that community. So it's worth looking into. I mean, I might just be telling all my stuff right now and somebody's going to come and charge me $5,000, but um, I don't know how to answer all, all of that. It's a challenge for sure. And I think it's a challenge everywhere. Like if I teach in a classroom and I'm charging students for a series and I play a piece of music, I think technically you're supposed to send somebody some like three cents. I don't know. If anybody else has information on that, please let, please let everybody know. But for now, trying to cover all of my bases. Um, I share what music I'm using. I'm now only using non-copyrighted music on my Facebook lives. Um, and then I'm sure, you know, you can get a letter from the musicians to let you use it, uh, in other places. So yeah, great question. I don't know all the answers. Um, Mandy says, okay, thoughts on self-care without the energy back from in, from in-person people. Okay, so thoughts on self-care without the energy back coming in. So you, without this energy exchange, how do you give it all out and then recharge? And of course, I'm going to tell you pranayama practices, <laughs> right? I'm going to tell you that that breath... Um, I, I am more exhausted after I teach an online class than I am an in-person class. An online class, like I said, you're dancing a lot more, you're talking a lot more, you're like, you've got to build that energy up. Whereas in an in-person class, you know, you're feeding off of each other, you're, everybody's having a good time, you're laughing, like people, you're telling a joke and you maybe hear a laugh. Whereas if you tell a joke online, like it's probably, I don't know what's happening. Um, so you have to, yeah, you have to re-energize yourself. So I know that if I go teach, I know that if I teach an online class and then I go try to teach a class that same evening, I'm, I'm zonked. Like, I, is zonked a word? I'm out of it. Like, I am so tired. So I've chosen to teach this online class on a day that I'm not having to teach another class. That way I have all of the energy to give and I teach it on a day well, now I have something on Wednesday evenings, but try to teach it on a day that I can also like just relax afterwards because it does take a lot of energy out of you. So breathing practices after you're done teaching, like sitting for a moment, having some water, soaking it all in and not judging what you just put out there is the best thing that I can tell you to do for your replenishing your energy and have a snack. Okay, um, Paloma, you're welcome. Let's see. Pearl says, also, I feel like students pay attention when they invest in your time. Yeah, I think so too. I mean, I think that that's any, anywhere, like if you're in person or if you're um, online. I, now I can tell you, I have students that join my online classes for many reasons. Some students, they're like actually up and dancing with me, doing the warm ups with me, everything. 
some students, they watch them later because you can post them and say share and it saves it to the group or the page. Some students are teachers and they're sitting there watching and like taking notes or, you know, picking up, what did she do with that warm up when she was working on this movement? Or, oh, I love how she's t putting her feet, or I love that trick that she used when she was like, whatever, the, whatever they're joining the online classes for. So that's the challenge if you're teaching your classes um, to students that you're wanting to actually get them up and moving is how do you hold them, how do you hold that, have that accountability? Especially if you're not using something like Zoom or Google Hangout. So Google Hangout, as far as I know, does not record the class. Like you have to use Google Hangout tied to something else in order to save that Google Hangout. There is a way to link Google Hangouts to YouTube and you can make YouTube a private unlisted video and then you can post the YouTube link of that unlisted video into your Facebook group. There's a lot of stuff that you can do. You just have to like link all of those things in together. Now, I know that people were talking about Zoom and Skype. I've only been a part of Zoom calls. I think that Zoom would work great if you have like three, four, or five students, but if you're teaching an online class to like 30 people, don't think a Zoom call is going to be effective. Like if, if, if you're teaching more than three, four, or five people, being able to see your students in any kind of television screen or computer screen isn't effective. Like it's, I personally, if you try it and it works, great. Personally, I don't feel like it's effective. I feel like if you are wanting feedback from your students, you teach them this course in its entirety and you give them homework. And then you allow them to either send you videos privately or upload videos in the group, um, you know, and then you share things that way. So there's definitely that. So whether you use Zoom or Skype, Skype connection just isn't really, I don't know, it's just not solid enough. Every time I get on a Skype call, let alone try to dance with somebody, it get, and I don't just don't like it. I just don't like it. <laughs> I've used it way too many times with unsuccess. Um, okay. Let's see. Okay. So Lenka says she's replying. Yeah, I don't think it's that easy here. The organization would still charge me whatever. And just because I bought the CD is not the same as using it commercially, commercially in Europe. Yeah, it's so different. Um, I've been in a lot of talks and I've watched a lot of talks um, with musicians saying like how this stuff works and I don't think they really know either. Um, I do know that, I mean, I do know that certain, well, I'll just say that I know that certain um, Patreon channels have contracts with musicians that basically says just use anything you want to use and they've either paid them one giant lump sum up front or they pay them so much uh per view if somebody wants to figure all that out i'm happy to pay them the money that they think i owe them you know what i mean so um yeah then we'd have to look and see okay well how many sales did you get after I posted that video and who were the sales from? Like the accountant in me is like, let's do an audit. <laughs> I don't know the answer. Yeah, so I'm glad that you said that. It's different everywhere you are. Okay, so let me just scroll through here real fast. I don't even know how long I've been on this thing. Um, I think I answered, do you have any questions? Let me know if you have any questions. So I'm really curious to see how everybody decides that they're gonna do their online classes, yeah? Um, what I wanna make sure that, um, what I wanna make sure that we're all doing is that we're all supporting each other. So I know that over the years, I've seen things online where um, there's another ATS dancer that started teaching classes in the same city that I'm in and this and this and this, and their classes are cheaper or they're doing them the same night. So they're in a better studio or whatever the case may be. And I'm not blowing that off. It's super, super important. It's an important topic that we probably don't need to get into right now. But the more people that are teaching online, those feelings are going to come up like, oh, they have this too. You know, part of the reason I didn't do a Patreon is because I was like, well, everybody's doing a Patreon. I want to do something different. So that's when I started doing these online classes. Um, and now people are going to do online classes. So it's like, well, now what, do, now what do we do? Right. And the only thing that I would say is yes, Diana supporting. 
So support each other. Everybody is on their own journey. The people that connect with them, maybe they're the same people that would have connected with you, but it, that's, their, that's their journey. So, I mean, like I said before, not everybody is going to be, not everybody's gonna feel a connection with me and the way that I teach and the way that I offer things, and that is okay. The people that are my people, that connection is going to be even stronger. And that's awesome. The people that connect with a different type of instructor or somebody that, you know, is, um, I don't know, more like tells stories about the movement, like things like that, that's going to be their people, right? And however the people, however the students, however we each need to learn is fantastic. So honor the space that you are in, be completely and authentically you, Focus on what you can offer your students. If you have what you feel is a specialty, that maybe you do swords, maybe you do man, man, mantone, maybe you do baskets, maybe you do, like, maybe that can be your offering to the community, right? We all don't have to be able to do everything, and that is okay. We're all going to attract different people, and that's great. People that take my classes take a lot of other people's online classes, and that's awesome. Get a, Look how much learning they're doing and how much motivation and how much infusing of the positive energy they're putting into the community. So, you know, when these feelings come up and we're going to see these things posted throughout the community, how can we take these and turn them into a positive? Like, that's awesome. You know, what are their classes? Maybe I want to take that person's classes or, oh, you know, I teach live classes on this day it doesn't work for my student, this other student, maybe I can point them to that person's classes. Or, oh, you know, I have a student that really enjoys the physical aspect of it, or she, they're an anatomy nerd too, and I just, you know, don't care. And so maybe they take Deanna's online classes, or maybe somebody really likes, um, you know, the musical aspect or the, the things that, you know, Michio can offer in her online stuff. So just find what works for you. Okay, end rant. <laughs> And geek mode and rant mode. <laughs> okay, um, yeah, so last couple of minutes, if we have any questions, let me know. Um, making sure that you stay within your time frame, that's a good idea. The thing that I like about online classes is I'll say, you know, the class is an hour. And if I go an hour and a half, it's okay. Um, I don't think I've ever gone less than an hour. I know that I've gone an hour and a half an hour 45. Online classes, if people need to walk away and come back later, that's cool. So um, it does give you a little more leniency in that way. Okay. Um, apparently, I'm seven minutes late for a meeting. Oh, no, wait. I'm getting text messages. They're late too, so it's okay. <laughs> um, oh, that one last note then, actually. Make sure that your ringer is off when you are filming from your phone. And in general, like just make sure that your ringer is off. Um, it's really annoying when your ringer comes on. Do not disturb is excellent. Um, and that way it won't only not make any sounds, but you won't get distracted like I just did with text messages coming in. All right. Well, I feel like I've talked forever. I hope that this was helpful. Oh my gosh. And I'm sure that there's something that I didn't cover. And I'm sure that there's something that I'm doing in some weird way that is a lot easier. And please let me know if you find that out because I'm doing what I learned basically by a lot of research and trial and error. So when I saw a lot of people thinking about online classes and where do I start, I thought, oh my gosh, these, like nobody has the time that, I, that it took me to put this in. Like they need their online classes up. They need them up there now. They need to be able to make their income. They need to be able to serve their students. They might be in the middle of a series or a session that people already paid for. I'm, I'm going to cry because I'm like, uh, all, the, all the stress that, I, that I, I'm so sad that other people are feeling in the community and I just want to be able to like do whatever I can to help. So someone asked, what is uh, the situation here in Portland for COVID-19? Today, um, the whole city, uh, the whole city, the whole city of Oregon, the whole state of Oregon, um, there are no more, like schools are closed until April, basically. So they extended spring break. So those are, there's two weeks, I think it's two weeks, yeah, that schools are closed. A lot of our studios here, yoga and dance studios, follow school systems when it comes to like weather, whether or not to close, if it's snowing, if it's whatever the case is going to be. So I don't know if our studios are going to close. Um, I haven't, I think right now it's fine. 
if you have p if you have you can't have gatherings of more than 250 people if i had 250 people and show up for my class <laughs> then i mean you know wow but um yeah so i think that for the dance and the yoga studios will be fine but i also want to offer i mean i'm doing my online classes for people that that are in town and that are out of town but i also want to make sure that if we can't show up to a studio somewhere that my students can find me um, online in those classes as well. So, um, yeah, Nora, Nora, Noraya. Yeah, a lot of people are having to teach at home. Yeah, so I'm just appreciative of you all joining me. I'll uh, put a blog post together, be a little less stressed about getting it done today. <laughs> but it'll have all the basically recap everything here for the people that you know need to use a translator and copy and paste or whatever. And I'll put some print screens in here as well. Um, every time I do a video and I don't plug something that I'm doing, I, I get a, a comment later like, you didn't tell them about this thing. So real fast, here are my credits. I teach online classes here live on Facebook in group series. My April series will be released this month. I think it's going to be all about core strength and twisting, uh, twisting movements. So like saw return, torso twists, rotate, rib cage rotations, all that kind of stuff, but also core work to actually be able to get into those twists a little bit more. Um, teaching, we have one space left at alignment of ATS in New Orleans. So if any of your events got canceled and you want to go somewhere and learn, you can come join me at alignment of ATS. Um, I will be in Colorado Silverton for tribal summit in September and ATS attacks is in August, August. Yes. ATS attacks is in August. So check out my website, prana belly dance and yoga.com. It's also where I'll have this blog post. Um, let me know if you have any questions. And yeah, have fun with your online classes. It is, it's fun. It's challenging and it's vulnerable, but it is fun. So have a wonderful rest of your weekend. Ooh, I should not have touched my face. <laughs> Stay safe, wash your hands, don't touch your face. <laughs> Much love everyone, bye.